Today we're going to be talking about problems on scooter carburetors. This carburetor here is for a 150 and the problem that we have is this here is the correct size diaphragm for this carburetor so I'm going to put it in there and show you. This little rubber piece here you line it up right there so stick it in there make sure this is inside the track and then just slowly push it in and see how it's has a little bit of play in it here and it's seated properly inside of the its track okay take that out and get you get a ruler I don't have my ruler here but you get a ruler and you run it across like this and you'll get about 60 millimeters and when you measure from here to here you'll get 60 millimeters now what two problems I've had with two different carburetors I got on eBay the carburetors worked fine themselves but the problem was the diaphragm is the wrong size here's one of the diaphragms that these carburetors came with and when you measure, you put your roller here and measure this one, it's, you get about 55 millimeters, which is obviously smaller because when you measure from here to here, you get 60 millimeters. So let's put this in there and see what happens. Get it in there. As you can already see, it's not, com the rubber is not completely touching the outer edge of the, of the, base here and then when you push it in see what happened the rubber is all messed up let's try that again push it in slower it's a, be it's a little better but you see what happens the rubber here it won't seal it won't sit inside its track properly so when you put the cover on it's not going to mesh it down properly and what's going to happen is when you're at, wide, at full throttle and this, the diaphragm gets pushed up that's likely to cause it to get stuck and not return back down so you'll be sitting at your light and if you can see that, you'll be sitting at your light and the diaphragm will still be up and then when you go to try to move your bike your bike will stall out because it'll be running super rich and that extra air, rush of air coming in will cause it to stall so that's actually what we're going to be talking about today is causes of this the diaphragm piston to get stuck up while you're at wide open throttle for long periods of time when it's supposed to drop back down when you're slowing down at a red light or you're stopping. So the first problem is this rubber is not is not the correct width. It's 55 millimeters. It needs to be 60 millimeters. So this is garbage. This is another one I have that came with the carburetor. This one, this one is uh, pretty old now. It's about three years old, but it's the correct size, 60 millimeters. And see, it fits right in there, and it seals, and it fits inside of its rail like it's supposed to. But I'm not going to be using this one. And another thing, you want to hold these guys up into the light. Make sure you can't see any light through the rubber part. Because if you got any holes, you want to change it. That one's a little old, but it's still good. This is a new one I got on eBay. I bought it separate. And this one is 60 millimeters, like I showed you already. It fits in there. Line that, line that little rubber thing up here. Make sure it's in its track, and then you just gently push it down like that then you put your spring in and the cover here this little notch here you want to make sure that lines up right there where that little rubber part is sticks out just kinda get the spring where it sits inside the cap press it on and there's little indentations in the cover that lock in place where the screw holes are so to hold it and then you just tighten the screws up. 
But before we do that, I want to show you another thing that could be causing the diaphragm to stick and get stuck up when it should be going back down. And that is inside here where the piston moves, this aluminum area in here. This carburetor is, is pretty new, but the problem is when you get it new, nobody ever cleans inside of here and these walls and polishes it so that the piston moves back and forth much easier. So what I'm going to do is I got some mother's aluminum polish here. This stuff worked great. I'm just going to put a little bit in there and then get a paper towel and spin it around in there. I already did this on another new carburetor I bought that has this correct size diaphragm, 60 millimeters, and I haven't had any issues with it yet. Just put some of that polish in there. And you're going to use a paper towel. It's all right. Use a paper towel. Not a big deal. As far as scratching, you just get it in there, slowly work it in to pick up some of the polish. And then you just kind of spin it around to buff it. And as you can, if you can see that, the pol as the polish cleans the aluminum, it picks up. I don't know what that is. I guess it's dirt. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty cool how it cleans, but it works great on aluminum. And I also use it on the aluminum rims on the bike and it, it, they come out looking really nice and I cannot believe all of the black stuff that it picks up from those rims it's crazy you want to do this several times I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on the camera but once you do this right you'll see a difference in how shiny the aluminum looks inside here where that slide's going to go Put some more, slowly twist it in there to pick up the polish, spin it around. And be careful inside here, try not to get any polish in there. If you do, you can just spray it out with some carb cleaner. You want to try to clean as much of this as you can. And you're going to need to use several paper towels, two or three paper towels to do this. Got to get in there and spin it, kind of polish it. You want to make sure you get some polish down inside here, and if you can see inside here, these little side areas here, you want to get that, and then just take your paper towel, get a thin piece of it, push it inside. With your finger, you just move it back and forth to pick up the polish and then clean the aluminum inside. See, the black, and then do the same for the other side. And try not to get it, make sure you don't get any of this polish in the jets where the jets are. Okay, that was re that side was real bad. See, I got a little bit in there. I just run the paper towel in like this, same as on the top, and then spin it around. And it picks up that excess polish. Then once you use the polish and you pick up some of the dirt in the carburetor, you're going to want to do it again, because you're still going to pick up more residue and excess polish that you didn't get yet. You can pretty much do this as much as you want until you're happy with um, how shiny it looks in there. You can run your finger in there. It's still a little rough, so I'm going to do it again. You'll feel a difference when when she gets polished really well. You'll feel a nice slick, smooth to it. And your finger will slide easy on it. It won't be a lot of friction. 
Yep, it's still picking up a lot of, a lot more dirt or whatever that is that it picks up. Okay, do this, I'm gonna do this one more time. Okay, it's starting to feel a lot better now. Now we're going to put the slide in and see how it feels. Kind of test it out. Make sure you line up the rubber thing there where it's supposed to go. Slowly push it down. Make sure it's seated. And just move it up and down. This is moving up and down. Very nice. I don't know if you can see. See how it's not, I don't even have the spring in there, and it's coming down really easy. That's what you want. So if you're happy with, as far as the polish, how it came out, close up your polish container, clean up your paper towels, whatever. Then we're going to put the spring in. And I had that problem on the other cardboard. I even tried stretching the spring a little bit to make it, you know, a little press harder the diaphragm but it's that still didn't work it still got stuck well aside from it being the wrong diaphragm I even tried the correct size diaphragm in it and it still had a problem it's still it didn't get stuck as much but it still got stuck so it was probably because the wall in here the aluminum was very dirty it had a lot of residue on it that was catching the diaphragm So the cover's clean. Then this little area here with the two screws. This area here. There's a little thing under here. You want to put the spring there. Then this, you're going to rotate it over. Make sure these two guys line up. And move it until the screws hold it in. And then get your two screws, two bolts that hold this cover on. Put them in hand tight for now. Tighten this one up. Not completely snug yet. A little snug. And you're going to tighten each one up incrementally so that diaphragm gets a good seal don't make these too tight because these screws strip easily okay now we got that in there now we're gonna do a little test on the diaphragm you can carefully stick a flat head in here to do this if you like I'm gonna get the flashlight so you can see a little better in here 
what I'm doing. So we're just gonna stick the screwdriver carefully under the diaphragm. Push it up. Actually, <laughs> I can't because I gotta hold this. There we go. Push it up. Let it back down. See, it came right back down nicely. You're just gonna do that until you're happy with it. And it seems like it's not gonna give you a problem coming back down. Okay, so that's that. Now we can put together the rest of the carburetor. So now you're gonna you have here another diaphragm it goes here. You want to put this in the light. Make sure there's no holes in it. If there's holes in it. You need to change it. Put it in there. It seats in there, similar to the bigger diaphragm. And then you have a spring. A spring you put right here. I will press it down. And you got the cover. Put the cover on over that. There's a little notch in there that the spring sits in, just like on the other diaphragm. Put that on there. Make sure this little connector for the hose is pointing upwards towards the top of the carburetor. And you gotta press it down like this. Then you get your two bolts, twist them in hand tight, there's the other one, there's the other one, this is a little tricky because you gotta press the spring down so that otherwise it'll pop out on you, everything will come flying out, and you just tighten these the same way, tighten it down snug, light not very slightly and now tighten each one incrementally until they're got a slight snugness to them probably only about one or two foot pounds and that's it you don't want to strip them and if you make them too tight and you can't get them off later they'll strip got that guy back on now we need to Put the float in, in the bowl, right here. There's a pin here that seals off the fuel flow. Don't want to lose that. And it goes on the float right here. This little thing here kind of slides on and keeps it there in place. Because it's real easy to come off, so you got to be careful. And then you got to get that little needle inside of and you gotta get the needle inside of this little hole right here then there's another pin that goes in here make sure it goes through the float there we go play with it to get it to the other side Okay, got it. Bring it back up. I already got the jets in there. They're pretty easy. Just need a flathead. If you got any modifications on your bike, make sure you got the correct size jets in there so you don't run too lean. We're gonna get our cover here. Which you got your little gasket. If you got an older carburetor, make sure the gasket is not falling apart or dry rotted because you'll have a leak. And then this end, this area here, it's shaped differently, goes up here and it's just wide enough to fit around here so that that pin can't pop itself out and then your floats going all loose. So you put that side on like this. Then you get your four bolts. And 
Actually, I'm missing a bolt here. For some reason. Let's see if I can find an I think I found another one. Okay, I got another one. You're gonna wanna tighten up these guys. Once you get them slight snug, you're going to want to tighten them simultaneously. Crisscross pattern. And if you're wondering what this is here, this is my monster truck that I made myself. I like making stuff, I'm pretty creative. Anyways, now I should start tightening them up. Get them slightly snug and then I'm, I start up here. And this one, turn it a little bit, go to the one below it, turn it. Go to this one over here, turn it. This one, turn it, start back up here, turn it, down here, turn it, over here, turn it, over here, turn it, up here again, turn it, down there, turn it, over here, turn it, up here, turn it, and that's it. Double check them again if you want. Remember, just make them snug, you don't have to overdo it. These screws will strip easy. Okay, now, I'm going to take it off this other carburetor. We have to put the choke assembly on. Also check out other videos on my channel because I'm going to be uploading a video soon about how to check to make sure that the choke is actually working. An easy way that you can visually see that it's working. Okay, so you got your little three ring gasket here. Make sure you put this on here right. It goes on like that. And here's your choke assembly. It goes on like that. It just has two bolts that hold it in. Because there's a little rubber seal, I would tighten it down crisscross so the seal is meshed evenly. I don't have to risk any leaks because if you get a leak here, you'll have a, this is be this is a, uh, considered a vacuum leak. If you get a leak in this choke area somewhere or in this little up here in the, where there's a little rubber ring you get a leak there you have a vacuum leak that can cause your bike to stall or to, to idle to go up and down and you don't want that okay let me get the choke on let's see there's another okay the part the plate over here that the throttle cable connects to we need to put that on You have to take that off to get that diaphragm out because it's the plate's in the way. The plate goes on, I believe, like this. The plate goes on like this. You want to make sure you get it on the right way, otherwise, when you go to put your throttle cable on. You'll know that you put it on backwards. It's not a big deal though, you can just get a screwdriver and fix it. These screws don't matter, there's no gaskets or seal here, so you can tighten these up one at a time if you want. They're again, they're the same as the other bolts, so don't over tighten them because they'll strip very easily. Just hand tight with your screwdriver, they're not going to go anywhere. Okay, is that it? 
Oh yes. And we need to get from the other carburetor the idle adjustment screw for the fuel. Most people say to set this to one and a half turns outward to two turns outward. This carb is going to be in storage for right now, so I will, I will set it for one and a half. So what you have to do is, right here, tighten this screw all the way in as far as it'll go, but don't over tighten it. You'll strip it. Okay, it's tightening up now. Okay, wherever you stop at, see it's kind of at an angle. You gotta try to remember, visually remember that angle. And now you're gonna turn it, unscrew it, one and a half turns. So you're gonna go turn it out to the same spot. That's half a turn. Do it again. That's one turn. Do it again. That's one and a half turns. Try to keep it as close to where it stopped when you tighten it as possible so to be more accurate. So that is roughly one and a half turns out now. And take this guy here, this little, it's a breather line here. Not really necessary, but it's good to have some type of line on there to keep water out. And these lines stink, they always dry rot, so I just get a piece of vinyl tubing and maybe a little zip tie to put tension on it and have it hanging down. Alright, and then you got your car back together, you can check this if you want. Open this up, throttle plate, make sure the spring is nice and strong. Now the idle, you're going to have to adjust the idle screw here once it's on the bike. And the bike, make sure the bike is warmed up before you do that. It's usually when you get a new carb, it's not correct, so you have to adjust that. Okay, I think that's it. Everything's back together now. The carb's good. Oh yeah, make sure your this screw here is tight. So otherwise the fuel in your bowl will leak out and then your bike won't start. Alright. There you go. Thanks for watching.